Picking up on our study from 2 John, we've stopped at the verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. And with the reward that we've talked about is something that we can earn from Christ for things that we do for the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, it looks like we can lose rewards based upon our conduct. And you say, well, why are we going into the judgment seat of Christ as we're doing John? I told you since the beginning, this is the 37th uh, part of, of 2 John, and there's 13 verses. We are going to go slow, and we're going to study for those who are newborn in Christ, those who are aged in Christ as a, rem as a reminder, and those that are newborn to grow. For those who are not even saved. See, we're, you look at the Bible as a telescope. Genesis, Revelation, 66 books. New Testament, Old Testament. Abraham, Isaac, Jesus, Paul. Alright? The telescope is we're looking at Second John. Now you get me a magnifying glass. And I'm going to look at one... Pacific book, the, uh, the Epistle of John, Second Epistle of John. I've broken out the the, the magnifying glass, and we're looking at the, the thirteen verses. We're looking at the letter in general, and what I'm doing now is I'm taking a microscope and I'm looking at not only the verses, we're looking at words. So we're doing a whole realm of magnifications of lens to what the Word of God says. Now this is the beloved apostle that that laid upon Jesus' breast. This is the only apostle that did not die a violent death. This was the apostle that was Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. The three disciples of Jesus that went further than the others. This is a disciple that's recorded to be at Jesus' cross. Now, with the judgment seat of Christ, we have read, we go back to number 35, the previous one, there are six elements listed, and six is the number of man. Like a carpenter that needs materials to build a home, a Christian builds his life of materials. The foundation that we read is the salvation is Jesus Christ. And let's go back over there to 1 Corinthians 3.11. I think that's the one I want. 1 Corinthians 3.11 that we read, For other foundation that can no man lay that, then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if a man build upon this foundation... The foundation, the building stone is Jesus Christ. Now your life as a Christian, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble. You look at a house, it's got wood, it's got stucco, it's got cement, it's got nails, and that's your life as a Christian. Now we too much look at the church as a building, and it's not a building, it's the people, and our lives are building. Not a building, building. Not a noun, a verb. Since the day you got saved, is what you did and what you do for the use for your whole life. Whether evil or whether good. Was it cheap? Was it worldly? Was it devilish material? Or was it in the, was it from God the holy wise articles that God has given you? Your life, the deeds that you do as a Christian, will be will be judged upon your conduct, your heart. The attitude 
And how much, I mean, how much, it, it was just, just do it and that's it. Or did you put effort into it? Now the six are gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble. That is your holy, I don't want to give a name, but your, your, your lumber yard, what it used to be called when I grew up. My grandfather was a carpenter, so he would say, Sally, you want to go down to the lumber yard? I got to get some materials. I, I'd go down there, and we go through the nails, we go through the screws, we go through the wood, maybe a tool. And he would go do what he has to do. And there would be a finished product. Whether it was a roof, a siding, or he had to paint a house, there was an end result. And that's what we have. Your entire life results comes down to six materials. That's it. Tithing. Tracks. Missionary. Bible teaching. Bible reading. Your family. Your spouse. The gasoline in your car. The dog food. You got the most expensive furniture, or you got the cheapest furniture, or you got the mediocre furniture. What you drank, what you ate, what you excuse, what you bought. Everything comes down to six items. Three are good, and three are evil. Three, the Trinity. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There's also Satan, there's also the false prophet, and there's the the uh the, the Satan the devil himself. That's it. Six items. Three for God, three for Satan, the world and yourself. Now many of us has never touched pure gold or silver. Or maybe in a precious stone. I've seen them. I've gone to a jeweler's place and I, I've seen them inside the glass case, but I don't think I've ever touched a precious stone a day in my life, a real one. I've, to, I've touched 14 karat gold, and, but I don't think I've ever laid a hand on pure gold. Silver, I've had some things silver. I don't know if it's real, general in silver. I don't know. I'm not a gem, gemist or anything like that. But God offers it uh, offers it to us. Now this is after all the world is gone. The, the curse of Genesis three is, is 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 gone from the Christian. We have been raptured. The earth is on seven years coming of Satan and, and the great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. We have been raptured out of the church, out of the world. When I mean by church, I mean, when the rapture happens, there's only going to be saved people. There's going to be no lost people in the congregation when the day is rapture. If we are in church when the rapture happens, there's going to be some people left behind in the church building. We're going to have a guaranteed gathering one day of 100% saints and no outsiders in it. That's what I mean. We'll be taken out from all that. And to what God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ is, is the holy. So when he offers us the gold, the silver, and the precious stone, man, you're talking about it without the curse, no infirmities, no dirt or anything. Pure. 100% pure that man has never seen. And God will offer to us for what we did that which is good and right. Gold, silver, and precious stone goes to that what is good and right. Many of us has handled wood, maybe hay, even stubble. And in the judgment, that is our loss. Our work, Paul says, will be made manifest. And that will be in verse number... 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. 1 Corinthians 3.13. Now the 1828 Webster's Dictionary. Number one. Plain. 
open. Clearly visible to the eye or obvious to the understanding. Apparent. Not obscured or difficult to be seen or understood. So when we are standing before the Lord Jesus Christ, our work will be made plain, it will be made open, it will be visible to the eye. We're going to understand. And not only you, but all that are around you. I believe everyone will be looking on. Could be wrong. And if I am, I am. But I know one thing. It is between you and Jesus Christ. Now, for that day shall declare, that day when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, a saved individual only, it's you and Jesus and your works from the day you got saved to the day you died or raptured. Because it shall be revealed by fire. The judgment is fire. Not hell. Fire. Gold, silver, and precious stones do not burn up. They endure. Wood, hay, and stubble touched to fire becomes ashes. Ruined. Lost. Lot. Everything he had in Sodom was lost. Gone. The entire city destroyed by fire. Yeah, but the Bible says he was right. He was he, he was righteous. Just Lot. That doesn't mean just Lot alone. That means he was just. And he's a he's a picture of a Christian coming out of the world with nothing. I don't think the Bible records he took anything but his two daughters and his wife. This is what is done for the world. Wood, hay, or stubble. The law. Self and even for the devil. And yes, you can do things for Satan. I've been in plain churches where it, 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 the work is primary for Satan. The people there are primary for Satan. But you think you're doing it for God. But wherever I said, plain, open. You may think you're right now, but at the judgment seat of Christ, you'll be declared wrong for what is wrong. I don't care who you are. Your entire life fruits will be laid to fire. But the fire doesn't try your soul, only your works. Now look here, he says, If any man's work, oh, you know, let's put, the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he has built therein, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, wood, hay, or stubble, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. This is not hell. This is not eternal judgment that, you know, oh, here you are, then you go to hell. No. Your works. Now, you're not saved by works, but you have works after salvation. Whether you did it for God or you did it just for yourself or in between. The fire is put to your works after salvation. The fruit you've done in your life as a born again Christian. <coughs> Jesus said, wherefore by their fruits you should know. There are some people, that, oh, I'm a Christian, I look at, the, at their life like, no, I don't think you are. I can't say you are or are not, but I, I, what you're doing, what, what you're living, I don't think so. That will be tried. You have fruits, Christian. You're everything. The good apples and the bad apples. And don't worry, one bad apple ain't going to ruin, ruin the whole bushel. That will just burn up. The good apples will remain. 
And you will have bad apples. We all do. I do. I will stand before Jesus Christ and there will be ashes. I guarantee it. I'm sorry to say it, but I guarantee there will be ashes. Guarantee. Okay, now. See how far we get on this one. Gold. Something that man values. You hear, uh, you know, go buy gold. America is off the gold standard. You replace it for a silver certificate, which is a piece of paper. Gold. It's deity. Deity, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. What man values the gold standard is valued by God in his son, Jesus Christ. You won't be rich with all the money in the world of gold. And then be at the great white throne judgment and say, you know, you held what was the symbol of my son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as a king. What did you do with it? The highest of the money standards. The highest of all the standards God has is the Lord Jesus Christ. And people like Nebuchadnezzar just made an idol of gold and have the whole of the world. You know, you got gold foil. You just had gold in the past, you know, Mary, Mary's uh, mass of Christ there, service. The wise men brought gold to the Lord Jesus Christ, the king. Upset Herod. Had babies killed. Your fruit is rewarded by service to Jesus Christ. It's a reward. Look at John 10.30. Look at some of these verses I got here. John 10.30. I and my Father are one. Jesus Christ is God. And God is Jesus Christ. Deity. John 8.58. John 8.58. I'm turning, I know, but I'm turning to as you turn. And we'll read what the what the Bible says so you don't think I put any extra slant into it. And as I turn to the page of the Bible, hopefully you're taking the same amount of time to turn to the place in the Bible too, so you can see it with your eye. If you can't keep up, write it down and go back and look it up. Please, look it up. I may have made a mistake. I may be trying to put another Bible in your lap. Try me out. Test the spirit. John 8, what did I say? 58. I believe. John 8, 58. Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Oh, there we go. Let's get some rocks and stone them, the Jews did want to. They didn't stone them, but they picked up stones because they know exactly what Jesus Christ was saying, Mr. Jehovah Witness. I'm God! Now, you go recount your people and find out how many more 144,000 you don't you know. Let's get the Bible doctrine. So, a Jehovah Witness won't get gold because he doesn't believe Jesus Christ is God and God is Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus Christ is God. I believe he's, he is the king and the king and the king of kings and presidents. All of them. George Washington all the way to President Obama. So I have an opportunity to get a gold crown in my belief that Jesus Christ is God and God is Jesus Christ. Now if you're saved and you run to the Jehovah Witnesses and you fall into their doctrine that Jesus is not God, you just lost that crown. By entering their very doors and in their congregation. You lost the crown. I lost the crown. Lost the crown. In the glory, I lost the crown. 
not how that hymn goes. Wear a crown. I can't. I lost it. What a shame. First John 5, 20, Exodus 3, 14 with that I am, and Matthew 2, 1 through 3, 10 and 11. Gold was what the wise man brought to Jesus when he was a small child. I didn't say baby. Gold doesn't burn in fire. It's a reward. So not only do I, my belief in Jesus Christ as God and God Jesus Christ, I earned that crown. Everything I do for Jesus alone, I get an opportunity to get gold. Let's say I gave somebody, I said, listen, I'll give you this money in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's gold. Lord, I, I, I see that guy over there. He frightens me. But for you, Lord Jesus, I'll hit him a track. I'm scared, but I'll hear that guy a track. That's Jesus Christ. I don't know where and far, how far you know in your life that something and things you have done different from others that you have done just for Jesus. Maybe you sing it in the car and it's a song that no one's ever written, but it's for you and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's cool. Don't go to Jehovah Witnesses and false witnesses. You will lose that gold. Jesus said, if you deny me, I'll deny you before the Father. Now, that ain't salvation. That's, that's the right to reign. But imagine Jesus Christ said, here's gold. Oh, wait a minute. No, you, you denied me as who I was. I'll take it back. I was going to give it to you, but I'll take it back. Yeah. You a Christian? Well, yeah, I go to church. Well, take the gold back. I not only go I not only go to church, but I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ my Savior. Here's gold. A name that men curse. And you have a chance to use it righteously. Brother and sister in the Lord. Just like we're going to be doing each of these things each week. I'm not in a rush. You know how important it is for you not only to go out and witness. The Bible says in Mark 16, go you know the world and preach the gospel. That's not it. That is not it. You want someone to Christ, put a little notch in your belt. If the church rolls, you got 400 saved in the city of 200. Yeah. 500 people were, were baptized this week, this, this year, and only 20 people in the church. You, know? you say, Brother Tyler, what are you trying to say? You know, you're trained those Christians up that you, you know they're babies. They're bathed in Christ, the Bible says. You're responsible to rear them up. Paul says, Timothy, you're my spiritual son. And he reared Timothy up with the help of his mother and his grandmother. But when, when someone by you is, is led to Christ, you become their spiritual parent. They become your spiritual child. And you know who feasts on young babies? The very religions I'm telling you about, the, the Jehovah Witnesses, the, the Mormons, Satan. And Baptist churches who have a wolf in a pulpit dressed as a sheep. See, we can't just go out there and, you know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I shall be saved. Good, yeah, there's one. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I shall be saved. Yeah, there's another one. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I shall be saved. Yeah, there's another one. There are some of you that are saved right now in 37 messages. And you're, you're probably looking at me at the puppy dog. Like, I've never heard that before. Shame to your pastor. Shame to the man that led you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen, I can give you a name. I won't give it to you now. 
the man that led me to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. But he never took me under his, under his arms. He never took me under, under his care to raise me up. He said, okay, move on to the next one. As soon as I was, after I was saved and baptized in the church, okay, that's it. He never had a Bible study with me. As a matter of fact, when it came time later on in life when God has grown me in the Word of God, when I'm trying to help the church and I'm trying to help Christians grow and all that, he turned his back on me. That ought not to be so. He said, what are you saying? If we can lose a reward by our conduct, by turning from Jesus, ought we not take those people that we have to run to Christ to bring them up in Christ? Imagine if, you know, you say, oh, abortion is, is murder, abortion is murder, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, but how many spiritual children have you witnessed to have turned to Christ and you let the wolves devour them? And you don't know where they are today. The dogs have eaten them. And they may be in a church, a Baptist church. They may be in a false religion today. Thinking they're doing right. Saved. And yet, not going to get no crowns at all. Get nothing. And whereas you went out and witnessed to him, you didn't bring him up in the word. I've had one man as a convert. And I would sit down with, with, with the family and we would have Bible studies. We would study the Bible. And when I thought he had given up, well, to my surprise, he is still in church. It's a bad church, but that's the only church. It's a bad church. And that area of the United States is terrible for churches. It's not in a false religion. He's learned enough from me to know what is wrong and what is right. I had another man I, I witnessed to, got saved, and... He never came back to church, and I never don't know where he is. And that may be to my fault, or maybe to his fault for, I don't know. That may be a burn-up for me. I don't count it as a notch. I count it as a, as a soul that could grow in the Lord. Religions and the wolf feed after the young, the bruised, the sick animals of the herd. Lions, when they are out looking to in the pack, looking whatever they call it, looking for something to, to dine on, they don't look at the most uh, athletic, if you can say that for an animal, antelope. They look at the antelope, man, he's running around, he's boom, 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 look at that, he's here, there, everywhere, he's, and you know, he's beating up all the other male antelopes, and they don't look at that one. They look at, for the young antelope. And he's walking around, look at the butterfly, I don't know where everybody else is, and then, they got him. That's the one they'll go. The sick, the lame, you know that antelope, he's got in some kind of thing and he's limping along, he can't really keep up, and he's trying, he's trying, that's the one the wolves will go after, that's the one the lions will go after, that's the one that the wild pack of dogs will go after, because that's the one that's not going to run away. Jesus told Peter, feed the sheep. Feed my lambs. You start off with milk and you work your way all the way up to aged food. 
Are we doing that? Or are we just converting them? Hey, another notch. Are you growing? See, it's not about numbers. It's about what you do. And maybe some Christians who are saved are going to lose the gold because they were never taken under a hand on how to grow. And being young, they cast the gold away, maybe to a false religion. Not every church is rooted and grounded in doctrine and sound doctrine. Not every church is right. And it's sad, too many churches don't have time for the young ones. It's not the, just the pastor's job to take everybody under hand and guide them. Well, what, what's wrong with you? You got extra time? And it doesn't even have to be your convert. Maybe the person that, that, that witness to him got to say, maybe they're working with somebody else. Maybe they got too, too much stuff going on. Why can't you help? You know, a shepherd has a dog that helps with him with the sheep. He, he can, the Bible says he can hire a hireling to help with the sheep. You don't have to be the shepherd. You can be the shepherd's dog. He's just as good. You can be the hireling. Silver. In the Bible, silver is the price of redemption. Redemption is when you buy back. Jews, Judas valued Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. It's a buying back. Look at Genesis 37, 22. Genesis 37. Genesis 37, 28. 37, 28, I believe I said. Yeah, 37, 28. Then they passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph to Egypt. And we go Zechariah 11, 12, 13, Matthew 26, 15, 27, 3, and then Leviticus 27, the buying back. Silver is when you tell someone about Jesus Christ. See, redemption. Back where I come from, when you bought a can or bottle of soda, you paid five cents for the container. And then you could redeem that can or bottle back to the store and get your five cents back. When you become a witness, you spread the gospel. Mark 16, 15, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Now let me add, silver is achieved by a personal witness, one-on-one, -on -one, mouth and mouth tracks, tracks are a witness, funding or helping a missionary, they go out and witness and tell people about Jesus, and you help them, praying for lost souls, a missionary, Somebody going out knocking on doors Tuesday. Uh, someone Wednesday is going to be preaching on the street. There are people come up to my Facebook page. Pray for us. We're going to go pass out tracts. Pray for us. We're going to go preach on the street. And listen, when I pray for them, that's silver. And I may be getting ready to go to work or go to bed. Praying for someone's lost child, praying for my own lost family. That's silver.
Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 6. Let's see that one. 1 Corinthians 3 6. 1 Corinthians 3 6. My pages stick together in my Bible, and so sometimes when I'm almost there. Corinthians, I'll move over to Colossians. Like, whoops, got to back up. All right, what did I say? First Corinthians three six. I have planted. This is Paul. Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. The increase that God gives, the silver will go to Paul for witnessing. And Apollo watered. Paul will get the reward too. Did you take part in for the search of lost souls? Any part, prayer, funding, doing. Gave someone a gospel track. Oh, they didn't, they didn't, nothing happened. What about later on? Did you have in some part for lost souls? Did you help for the search of lost souls? You give money to Cambodia. For the missionary to go over there, to stay over there, and to put his full work in witnessing and, and growing Christians and growing churches. I hate those words. But you took part way back here in the United States. That's to your credit, the work that he does. Do you pray for the workers that are out going? Now, maybe door knocking is not your thing. Do you pray for them? Maybe street preaching is not your thing. Do you pray for them? I, the other day in my store, I came across a gospel tract that was not placed by me, and I praised the Lord for it and put it right back. That guy who put that tract there for someone lost to find and I'm praying for that with that guy. We're both going to get the, the, any rewards but silver for trying to win lost souls to Jesus. Now we haven't got to those who get saved. This silver is for trying. The effort. God gives you an A or silver for trying. It says go in all the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say go in your world and get them saved. God gives the increase. Well, no one got saved. But I've tried to witness. I pass out gospel tracts. I tell my friend, you got silver. You have earned silver. How's that? You believe Jesus Christ is God? And you do things for Jesus Christ? Well, yeah. You got gold and silver. Did you know that? That won't burn up. You know, sorry for those that don't trust Jesus Christ. We'll get in that later. But those that don't turn to Jesus Christ as their Savior, you get silver, they get hellfire. Silver put to the fire remains. It's a reward. And we're at 38 minutes. Let's see if we can do precious stone. Get the three good work. Precious stones are souls that God increased for Jesus Christ. They have knelt down whatever way they do at the altar or whatever it is. They have received Jesus Christ as their Savior and you had part in it. Either you watered or you planted. Or you planted or you watered. Sometimes, some way along the way, they have trusted Christ as their Savior. God increased. You get a precious stone. I said, as far as I know, two people in my life presently before me have asked Christ as their Savior. One, I'm not sure. But if you had the ability that God has allowed someone in your sight, in your presence, receive Christ as their Savior. That is stone, precious stone. You tried that silver, precious stone are those. Now remember what I said when you, when you support a missionary? 
And you get a missionary letter and, and some name you can't even read that has trusted Christ as their Savior. If you support that missionary by prayer and by money or by whatever, that is not only silver to you, but now that's a precious stone in your crown. Isn't God wonderful? You didn't even have to be there. You don't even have to know the person's name to earn a precious stone. But those that have done for Jesus Christ have come to Jesus Christ as their Savior. You get a stone. Silver is for putting the effort into. Precious stones are for those that you work, aided in, to that get saved. You took part. I have planted Paul's word, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. Look at that. That guy just ripped up that track right and threw it right in my face. You got silver. That woman takes that gospel track and puts it in her purse and walks on. You never see it again. And then somebody, you know, she looks at it, reads it. Somebody comes to her and she witnesses it to her, or many people, and she, she eventually gets saved. You got silver from for doing your job, and then now you got a precious stone. 20, 30 years later, maybe she got saved. And you probably, sometimes you may not even know. There's a precious stone. Isn't God wonderful? And as you take that newborn Christian and train them up correctly, if they're in your presence, you're worth precious stone. First Peter two, four and five, Acts twenty, twenty eight, first Corinthians six twenty and seven twenty three. A newborn Christian is as a precious stone in the eyes of God. Diamonds are a woman's best friend. Pearl. A living organism. That is a gem. But what God thinks of newborn Christians who have put all their faith and trust in His Son. And you don't even have to be there to get the stone. Paul said, First Corinthians 3. You know, I may not work the dirt, but if I pay for the seed, I pay for the guy, for the missionary's rent, maybe for him to get a new vehicle or the gas for his vehicle, because he can't work because, you know, he's, he's in another country and you're taking part. Precious stones in fire remain. It's a reward. So, do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as God? Have you done anything in your life for Jesus Christ and for Jesus Christ alone? You know, Jesus says you go off in a prayer closet. You go off all by yourself just to pray to the Lord. How about that? Okay, you got gold. You ever try to witness to anybody? Tell them about the gospel track, uh, telephone letter, voicemail, text, uh, answer machine message, bumper stickers, whatever you can do to get the word out about the blood, shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that you're lost and you need a savior and there's heaven and there's hell and Jesus alone saves and Jesus save, will save you from your sins. Silver. Do you think as far as your work for what you've done for witnessing, missionary, gospel track, or outright talking about, you think somebody got saved from, from part of the work you've done? Precious stone. You see how easy that is? What? How hard was that?
next time we'll talk about the, the eternal loss and I'm not talking about your soul we looked at the eternal rewards you can get lost too things you build there are losses you know, within a house, sometimes they, they, the roof may leak, the pipe may leak, the bulb may burn out, it may need caulking, the tile fell off. There are things in the house that it just lasts, and there are things in the house that need repair. That's what our life is. God is holy and gracious enough to reward us. And we are unholy. We are sinners that we also have lost. And we'll talk about that next time. To God be the glory. It's not about just witnessing and bringing them to Christ. It's also growing them in Christ. It's to also realize that God is so great. To reward us with something that he commands us to do, but gives us the free will to do it. And there will be Christians who won't get any of these. They won't get one. There will be Christians who will just get one. You know, Jesus, God, okay, everything else not worth it. But see... If you get to the precious stone, you've already got one, the silver. You got the precious stone and you got the silver, you've already got the gold because you put Jesus first. Oh, did I forget to mention that witnessing to people, you put God first, you put Jesus. So, witnessing to people, you got gold. Look at that. But you know, you can go out and witness just to witness and, and not for Jesus because your church does it because someone dragged you out to do it. And that's a lot. You don't get anything for that. But let's talk about the reward. What you've done for Jesus Christ. Look, look at it. Gold, silver, precious. You know, everybody in the world fights for gold. They advertise it on the radio. Buy gold. I don't have to buy it. I just love the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to give it to me for free. Pure gold. The stuff that we're going to walk on in New Jerusalem. Silver. If you can't buy gold, buy silver. I don't have to buy it. God will give it to me free if I value souls. A diamond is a, is a woman's best friend. Forget that. I'm going to get a precious stone. What does it say, Proverbs? Uh, a virtuous woman... It's a crown to her husband. She is far above the price of rubies. Get rubies. Give me a precious stone. Scripture description. 